Hey guys, it's a lovely day in Melbourne. Welcome to another very exciting Premiere Pro tutorial. Whether you're a professional film editor, a vlogger, a hobbyist, we're always looking for easy ways to really make our videos stand out from the crowd. Unfortunately, there are only so many effects and transitions available in Adobe Premiere Pro and most of the inbuilt ones can be a little bit uninspiring. Usually, if you want to create something more fancy, you have to reach for an advanced tool such as Adobe After Effects. Therefore, in this video, I really want to show you the Sapphire collection from Boris FX. I have been using the collection for a little while now and I'm really starting to enjoy it because it does bring a lot of those advanced effects directly into Adobe Premiere Pro. On top of that, the collections also include two builder effects that I really want to show you in this tutorial. These builders allow you to create your own 100% custom effects, transitions and presets directly inside of Adobe Premiere Pro using a simple node-based workflow. But first off, full frontal disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Boris FX. Boris FX, in case you don't already know, are the creators of the fantastic plugin collections Sapphire and Continuum, as well as the Academy Award winning Planar Tracker Mocha. I've really been enjoying their products and if you want to get in on the fun, purchase something off their website and support me in the process, you can use my custom coupon code Surface Studio in one word and you'll get an additional 15% off. Now this is going to be a pretty simple tutorial and that's kind of the point, but before I talk your face off, let's jump right into it. Welcome to the exciting world of Adobe Premiere Pro. I have a really short edit here using some of the plugins from the Sapphire collections and right out of the box there's some really exciting effects and transitions in here. Obviously, Sapphire comes filled with pre-built effects and transitions and presets that you can just apply to your clip and build an exciting edit. Once you install the collections, in your effects tab, under the video effects, you will find a whole number of different folders for categories of Sapphire effects. And you'll also find one called Sapphire Builder. And in here, you'll find the S underscore effect effect. This effect is a container in which you can place, combine, customize and build your own effects and then save them off as presets. If you come into the video transitions, again under Sapphire transitions you will find a large number of pre-built transitions. But again in the Sapphire builder folder you will find the S underscore transitions effect which again is just a builder effect. Inside this effect you can combine and build and customize your own transitions and again save them as presets and use them later or share them with other people that you know you don't mind sharing with. In order to show you how that works I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and just delete one of my transitions that I've got here. Then I'm simply going to drag the S underscore transition builder onto that transition and that just works like any other transition in Premiere Pro. By default this is just a very simple cross dissolve transition and if you select your transition and come into the effect controls you will find the S underscore transition effect applied and right now all you can do is load a preset, save a preset, edit the effect, change what the background is for this builder and that is pretty much it. So for now let's simply go load preset and this is going to launch the Sapphire preset browser. In this browser you will find a large number of different categories and you can simply click into any of these and browse through them and just click on them and preview them right here in this browser to see what those transitions would look like. And there's some really cool ones in here. It's really fun to just browse through and see all of the different types of transitions that you can find and you can apply to your clips. Or if you already know what you're looking for or maybe you've created some presets with your own custom names, you can also just search for the effect and then again just scrub through at the top to just check out what this looks like. This is a very very noisy transition. Let's just go with this strip scramble right here and then once you found the preset that you like simply hit load and the transition is going to be applied to your timeline via the S transition effect. Now that we've loaded a preset you'll also find a number of parameters that control that particular transition. But the real power of the S underscore transition and S underscore effect builder within Sapphire come with the fact that you can fully customize all of these effects and transitions or you can just build them from scratch. In order to do that, in the Builder Effect, simply click on Edit Effect and this is going to launch the Sapphire Effect Builder. The Sapphire Effect Builder essentially exposes a node-based workflow to customize and build your own effects and transitions and therefore it's the tool that I like using the most and the one that I really want to show you in this tutorial. The interface for the Effect Builder is really straightforward. In the center of the interface you have the preview window and underneath that a little timeline where you can just click and drag through to preview the actual transition. Now there's two quirks and I can see them right now here in my preview window within Premiere. For one, 
the transition doesn't actually start at the clip I want to transition from. It already starts at the clip where I want to transition to. Also, the quality seems really low. It's really pixelated, a little bit weird. So let me just cancel out of this for a second. And back inside Premiere for one, I want to make sure that my timeline indicator is actually over the transition itself so that Sapphire can read both the source and the target clip, so both sides of my transition. And with the transition selected in the effect controls, I want to change the background from none over to video one. It's just a quirk with Premiere. So this way the data flows properly into the effect builder. And let's click edit effect to return to the effect builder. And now if we scrub through, there you go. This is the proper start and the end clip for the transition and the quality is nice and high again. So that's that fixed. On the left hand side of the effect builder, you will find a whole number of different effects and tools. And these ones are the building blocks that you have available to build up your network, your own custom effect. In the bottom of the interface, let me just drag this panel up just a little bit. You'll find your workspace. You can just mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You will have the actual node graph for your effect. Now this graph is pretty big and it was actually included in that strip scramble preset that we loaded before. In this tutorial we're going to build something much smaller and much simpler but I just wanted to show you that you can build however complex an effect or transition you want directly within Sapphire and then bind it all together and create anything that you can imagine. Over on the right hand side you'll find the selection parameters and right now that is empty because you need to select individual nodes within your graph and then over on the right hand side you can see and tweak all of the parameters. But now let's actually build a custom transition from scratch. And in order to do that, let's first come up into file and select to create a new S transition. You can also press Ctrl and N. Now Sapphire wants to save our changes, but I'm just going to click discard to start from scratch. And this is going to set up a brand new node flow with the minimal number of nodes that you need to actually create any sort of transition. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to left click on this node here down at the bottom and drag this up so they're all a bit closer together. Then I can right click in this workspace and drag around and mouse wheel up to zoom on in so we can see what this is. And by default, the most basic transition that you can create in Sapphire contains four nodes. It contains a from node, which represents the from clip. So this is the input on the left side of your cut. It has the to clip, which is the image data from the clip we're transitioning to. Those two then flow into this transition node where they get combined with a certain type of transition or operation. And then the output of that combination flows down into this result node here at the bottom. And this is what gets rendered out onto the timeline. Now, before we start building this graph, two options I really like to enable. For one, I like to enable snap to grid because it just makes sure that the nodes kind of snap properly in place. And I'm a little bit of a neat freak. I like keeping my graphs nice and organized. And the other option I want to enable is preview selected node. If I now select my from node, you can see my preview change. If I select my to node, you can see my preview change. So what is happening is that the preview window will show me what the image looks like at the node that I have selected within my graph. So this shows me just the from, this shows me the to. If I select the transition node, this shows me the output of that transition node. And you can see this is the actual dissolved transition. And then obviously if I select the result, I'll just see the output of that as well. So nothing changes here. But let's tweak this a little bit. Let's say I don't really want this boring cross dissolve that you know everyone's used absolutely everywhere. So let's select the transition node. And over on the right hand side, I can now change this transition. So let's pop this open and I can now choose a different type of transition. I can choose all sorts of different flips, film rolls, there's wipes in here, there's different dissolves in here and you can pick whichever one you want. Maybe I'm just going to go with a dissolve luma. If I now preview this transition, you can see that the dark parts of the image kind of erase first and then it transitions across and this actually looks nice and interesting and you can leave it at that. You can hit OK and then that's your custom transition. However, it's not very exciting, it's not very unique and it doesn't really use the power of the effect builder. So let's start customizing this more. Let's say that at the beginning of the transition, before we start cutting over, I want a little bit of digital noise to come in and distort this from clip, this input source that we have. In order to do that, we can now find a node on the left hand side in our components selection, like a building block, and apply that between the from input and this transition. So we're applying it to this image or to this footage coming in. So in our components, you can either do a search if you already know what you're looking for, or you can just browse and pick some different components and try them out. Under stylize, I have this digital damage node. And I can simply click and drag this into my workspace and drop it in. 
and I now have a new node in my graph. However, right now it's totally disconnected, which is why the preview is black. And it's got two bubbles on the top. If you hover over them, the top bubble is the source input to this node. And on the left hand side, you can also input a mask to change and control where the digital damage gets applied to. But what I want to do, I essentially want the output of my from node to go into the digital damage and then the output of that goes into the left side of the transition. So I can actually just click on the bottom of my from to pick this little arrow, point that at the source for the digital damage node and then take the output of the digital damage node, this little arrow, and point that on the left side of the transition. So now if I select this digital damage node, you can already see the preview here. You can see that this applies a bit of digital damage to my clip. So this actually looks really nice. And now this is the input on the left side of my transition. If I now select my transition node and again rewind and scrub through, you can see there's a bit of digital damage happening before this Luma Dissolve kicks in. Let's add another node. Let's say I want the edges to glow during the middle of the transition. So I want all of the bright edges in my footage to add a really nice intense glow over everything. For that, this time I'm going to come all the way up and maybe I'll go search and I'm going to select this edge detect node. I'm going to click and drag and I can drop this anywhere in the node, but I can also directly drop it over a connection between two nodes. So I can drop it directly onto the connection between two nodes and it will insert that node directly in that flow. Now I want the edge glow to be applied to the output of this transition to this distorted and transitioned image. So I'm actually going to drop this on the connection between the transition and the result. I'm just going to drop this right in. Let's just zoom out just a little bit. Let me just rearrange these notes just a little bit more so it's a bit easier to see. So now this edge glow happens over the entire transition. I can come to the beginning and this looks really funky but it doesn't fade in, it doesn't fade out. So this would start out really glowy already even before the actual transition kicks in and it would transition over. So I kind of want to fade this effect in and out. What I really want to do is I kind of want to overlay this edge glow onto the actual output of this transition. And in order to do that, I can use the layer node. So let's come into our components and let's search for the layer node. Let's grab this node and drop it in. And the layer node has three inputs. It has a foreground, a background, and it has a matte option, which again allows you to control which parts of this effect are actually visible. I'm going to drag the edge over to the left hand side and let's move the layer in place. Now I want the output of this edge detect node to be the foreground so that I can fade it in and out on top of the rest of the footage during this transition. And I want the output of this transition node to be the background underneath those glowing edges. So I'm going to take the output of my transition and feed that into the background on this layer node. And I'm going to take the output of my edge detect and feed that into the foreground of this layer. And then the output of this layer node is going to feed into the result. So I'm combining my transition as the background image with the edge detect, which will be my foreground. Let me just rearrange these a little bit. It just becomes easier to see if you keep things neat, especially if your graph gets a little bit bigger. Let's select the layer node. So we're now previewing the output on that layer node. And if I scrub and rewind, this looks very much exactly the way it used to. But now with the layer node selected, let's come over to the right hand side and let's actually start tweaking some of these parameters. The most important one is this foreground opacity. Remember this edge glow gets fed into the foreground and this transition feeds into the background of this node. So with that node selected, I can now tweak this foreground opacity to transition between my background and my foreground. Also, I can change the mode of how those two layers are being combined. Right now it's just being rendered on top of each other, but I can switch this mode from normal over to add and that is going to add those glowing edges on top. However, I now want to animate this opacity so it starts out at zero, kicks in and then fades back to zero so the glow edges are only visible during the middle of this transition. For that, over on the right hand side you'll have this animation button and this is going to bring up the animation curve for this property. Now the Sapphire Effects Builder doesn't actually allow you to set keyframes but personally I actually find this much easier to work with. You essentially have a number of different settings to animate this from zero to its max value, from the max value down to zero or from zero up and then down. And this is already kind of what I want. I want this opacity to start at zero, go up to one, which is my max value right here, and then go back down to zero. I can now increase the slow in and slow out to kind of ease in and out this animation. I can also slow the middle to kind of soften the curve out in the middle. And now if I come back and preview my transition, I can see the glow edges come in and then they vanish going back to the normal clip. And this is starting to look really cool. Let's just add something else. One effect I personally really like is the half tone effect. And the half tone effect kind of adds dots. It's kind of like a comic book dotted style that you can apply. So let me select the output of the transition so we don't see the glowy edges. 
And let's grab this half tone color component and drag and drop that just below the transition. So let's just drop that right in here. And that looks very interesting, but I think the dots are way too big. It's kind of hard to even make out the image. So I'm just going to increase the dots frequency to just make that a little bit smaller. And again, I don't actually want these dots to be visible all of the time. I kind of just want them to come in and then fade back out. And again, for that, let's use another layer note. Grab this note and let's drag and drop this. I'm going to drop this right between this half tone and the first layer. Let me just zoom out a little bit so you can keep seeing the entire flow. So from this transition, we now feed the output into this half tone effect, which then becomes the foreground for our layer component. And in the background of that, I'm going to feed this output of the transition again. So I can kind of fade in this half tone effect and fade it back out. Let's select this layer too. By the way, if you don't like the names of these layers, you can also just tweak them and change them to anything you want. I'm going to change the mode from normal over to screen. So it's a bit more of a lighter effect. And again, I just want to animate this opacity to fade this effect in and out during the lifetime of the transition. So let's enable the animation curve. I'm going to use the same setting as before. I want to fade this in and out, give it a bit of a slow in and a slow out and soften out the middle. And now if we preview this, cool. So there's the half tone kicking in and then it's fading back out. Let's select the second layer and maybe I'll also rename this to layer edge glow just so it's a bit easier to see what is what. And now if I rewind and scrub through, so you can see the half tone as well as the edge glow kicking in and then it fades back to the target clip. Finally, the last thing I'm going to add is a little bit of light rays bleeding out of these glowing edges themselves. For that, let's come into our components and search for rays, and I'm going to drop this rays node. I'm going to drop this right between the edge detect and this layer edge glow, and this is what it does to our actual edge detection. So this is the basic edge detection, and then this is the one with rays, and if I preview this, the rays are already animated to kind of come in and out, so this should work just fine. Let's click onto the results node. And I think this is starting to look really nice. Now, you may want to come into this rays node and just lower the brightness a little bit. It does seem a little bit too intense. But again, like feel free to customize this in any way you want. If you clear out your search, there's a huge amount of components available in the Sapphire Effects Builder. And all of these are nodes that you can drop into your workspace and build into your graph to customize this and build anything that you can imagine. Now, before we close the effect builder, one last important thing is, if you select any of the nodes in your graph, over on the right hand side in the selection parameters, you will see checkboxes next to every single parameter. These checkboxes actually control which of these parameters will be visible within Premiere Pro inside the effect controls. By default, they're all enabled, which means there's gonna be a huge number of parameters visible within Premiere Pro. So I would always go through all of these nodes in your project, disable them all. For that, you can simply disable the checkbox at the very top of your selection parameters, and then enable only the parameters that are most relevant to controlling the look and feel of your custom effect or your transition. So I'm just going through my graph and turning most of them off, except the ones that are actually relevant. And once that's all done and cleared, Let's hit OK and finally return to Premiere Pro. And here you now have the custom transition that we built from scratch. And in the effects controls under S underscore transition, you can see we only have the parameters visible that we've actually enabled. So now you can simply save this as a preset. You can categorize it, give it a description and save this preset and use it later. And you can also share this preset with other hosts that support the presets like um, Avid Media Composer, DaVinci Resolve, they'll work as well. So I'm really loving the S underscore transition and S underscore builder effects. They bring so much power directly into Adobe Premiere Pro without the need of having to jump into a dedicated video compositing or animation package such as Adobe After Effects. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.